really changing the predictive model to actually force it to have smaller cell coverage. So it's very important that you get that one correct. Otherwise, the potential for this model predicting reality is very, very slim. In our environment, we're going to build a model of an office. In fact, we're going to do the train signal office. And so it's got lots of cubes and walled offices. So we're going to select that one. Now, the floor height is an incredibly important consideration, which most people forget about. They might leave it at the default. And I'm also very surprised how many times people go on a site survey and come back not having measured the distance between the floor and the ceiling. If you're placing your access points on the ceiling, it's really important that you get that height correct. And you can have a little bit of fun with this. If you put in a measurement like 100 feet, you'll get some really strange results from the model because most models will assume a narrow range of feet in terms of the actual ability to predict accurate results. So if you get really strange results from your predictive model, do check that you put the feet in correct. Now we're going to import an image of the floor plan at train signal and we're going to be bring in a PNG image. This tool also allows you to bring in some other forms of images. You can see that over here and it also allows you to bring in a CAD file as well. So we're going to browse for that file. So now we hit the next button and you can see that it's brought in my floor plan. So I now have the opportunity to change the dimensions of this floor plan. Now the first thing I want to do is just move this up into the corner. I don't want to have any edges there. And then I'm going to unclick the maintain aspect ratio and by holding down the shift key, I can actually expand this to the size and dimension that I actually want this to be. I could also key it in, of course. And again, I don't want it to be bigger than my building. So we go with this as the dimensions. Now there's two tools that I'm going to show you in this demo. The first one is the map editor. And the second one is the planning tool. Now, the map editor is the one that I use to add walls and obstacles and things like that. And the planner is the one that I use to actually predict where my access point should go. So in this example, I'm going to click here to launch the map editor afterwards so I can start drawing in exactly what's in that environment. So I'm going to click OK. And over here, see how it brought up the map editor to save me having to find that. You know, otherwise I would have had to click this button and look down for it. The other option, of course, is I could have just clicked one of these because there's my map editor and here's my planning mode tool. So they're both here for me as well. But it brought it up for me and now I'm going to select the go. Okay, so that brought up the map editor. So let's take a look at what we can do with this tool. So let's have a look at what's in the tabs. Here's the command and you can see I can save the file. I can, if I'm changing walls around and things like that, I can recompute the prediction. I can reload the last saved version, print it, etc. Over here in the edit mode, I can select all. That's particularly useful if I want to delete some stuff quickly. I can move obstacles around and I can duplicate obstacles, which believe me, saves a lot of time if you can duplicate the obstacles. Over here with the view mode, it's possible that I can deselect some, uh, some aspects. So I don't have to show them on the floor layout. It kind of keeps it simpler if I want to. Over here in the drawer, I have two options here that help me when I'm putting objects on the floor. The snap mode kind of snaps one object to another object. So for instance, if I was putting a filing cabinet and I wanted to snap it to the wall or something like that, it saves me trying to juggle it to get it close. 
the ortho mode, which stands for orthogonal mode, if you're a mathematician, what that's useful for is when you're doing right angles. So if you're doing an obstacle and you want it precise right angle, that's a great mode to be drawing in. So if I take you now along the next line, here's my pointer. Um, here I'm able to draw a line. So if I wanted to draw walls, this is the one I would use. Here I have a ruler if I want to measure some distances. I have a scale floor here if I'm a bit concerned about whether I've got the right scale and dimensions. Um, this is useful if I want to add a coverage areas. And this one here adds a perimeter. Here I've got a marker. Here is my inclusion zone uh, for location. So if I want to say, okay, if I'm doing RF tagging, this is the zone where I say, okay, this is my location zone. And this is my location exclusion zone. I can add rails here. Here's my option for saving it. Here I can delete. And here I'm able to magnify or reduce the image if I need to work on a, an object, I might zoom in. If I'm working on the outside walls, then I'd zoom out. So let's put some obstacles on here. And to do that, I'm going to click on this downward black triangle. And you can see here, I'm able to add some obstacles. And it's currently set up to add a light wall. And you can see a light wall gives a loss of about 2 dB. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a wall around the edges and I'm going to add a thick wall in my illustration and a thick wall in this example gives us a 13 dB loss. Other things that I can add here of course is doors and cubicles as well. So remember I chose that this was a cubicle and wall environment so this has given me these options that I would add in this environment. If I chose a different type of floor plan then I would have different obstacles that I could add. Now to add the walls I click on the line and now I'm going to add the walls going all the way around. So now I've added the walls going all around and down here, let me get my pointer back, and down here you can see that I wasn't slightly right here and I'm slightly in and it'll be really interesting to see if this gives me a weird coverage pattern when I start putting my access points in. So again, the main message here is you want to be as accurate as you can with where you place these obstacles in the walls so you get the right prediction of coverage. So I'm going to leave that like that and we'll take a look at what it looks like in a moment. So I've finished here. I'm going to click save. Take it away. And close this window. So now what I want to do is I want to go into the planning tool. That's here. The little spanner on it. Spanner, of course, is a very English term. Fortunately, you don't need to know that for the site survey. So I'm going to select add access points. And so what I want to do is I now want to predict where the access points would go given this floor plan and given the walls that I put in. So let's select add access points. Drag this coverage map down. There it goes. If I hold the shift key, I can pull it out. There we go. Got all my coverage done. So now what I want to do is I want to select the type of access points. So here I've left it as automatic. I don't want to do it manually. And here what I want to do is I want to select the 3500i access point. This is a dual mode 802.11n access point. Now this one has internal antennas. And so if you come down here, it's not giving me a choice of antennas because there's no external antenna connectors. So I'm just going to have to go with that, both in the 5 and the 2.4 gigahertz band. Here I could choose if I wanted to plan out just this spectrum in the 5 gigahertz or the 2.4, but I'm going to do both. And down here it allows me to choose my services, and so I'm going to select data. I'm down a bit. 
And now I say calculate how many access points do I need to cover this area if I'm providing just a data service. And the answer is four. Now, if I come up here and select voice, as you all know, voice needs a better quality of service. So I can do roaming, etc. I hit the calculate button and now it says, oh, if you want to do voice, then you're going to need six access points. And then if I want to do location, I click this button. And of course, you all know that with location, I have to be able to hear at least three access points. So it's going to put a lot more access points in this location. So let's have a look how many it thinks I need. 12. So that's a lot. So let's go back and just do data. Recalculate it here. Select apply to the map. So now it's asking me, do I want to go ahead and put access points on here? Anything that already exists will be removed and I don't have anything. So yes, I want to go ahead and place those access points on this map. It's now using that algorithm based on the type of floor plan I've selected to decide where to put these access points. And again, 